Are you sick of sucking at school? Do you want to get better grades? Well, you've come to the right place. Hey, my name's Oliver. Study tips. Today, I'm going to be sharing some of the methods I use to make my grades go from looking like this to looking like this. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how the hell did I do that? Well, great question, and I'm going to tell you. All right, first things first. Fix your attitude. Back in my day, about one year ago, I sucked majorly at university. No matter how hard I was studying, I kept failing. I hated all of my classes, I was unmotivated, I hated all of my professors, I was finding somebody to put the blame on. Does that sound familiar? Now, don't get me wrong, university ain't easy. No matter how hard your high school teachers may have tried, they cannot have prepared you for this. All right, now ask yourself, how hard do you want to succeed? If you don't want to succeed that hard, you better come back some other time when you're feeling it because without the right attitude, you are going nowhere. Tip two, get yourself organized. Get everything that you need in order in the first week of classes. I'm talking books, names of your professors, TAs, emails, office hours, chapters that you need to read, assignments that are due, right? all of it down so that you know exactly what you have to get done and when, and then you'll be golden. There are tons of apps out there to help you get organized. I personally use one called Microsoft To Do, and what you can do on there is make a to-do list for each and every one of your classes with dates, reminders, and you can repeat certain tasks if they happen every single week. There's other great ones out there too, like Notion, or just simply using your calendar on your phone or your laptop amazing ways to get yourself organized. I like to have about a week's advance of stuff on my to-do list so I know exactly what has to be done by the end of the week. I like to put major assignments on a big calendar and I like to put smaller assignments, appointments and things like that on my phone. Tip three. When you're studying, the best thing that you can do to let the content sink in is to study for no longer than 30 minutes with a five minute break in between. Also, make sure that you're constantly switching subjects. Chem, math, physics, math, science, math, math. These two essential tips have been proven to help you retain information and learn better. Most people struggle to focus for more than 30 minutes at a time, and that five minutes in between allows your subconscious time to mull over the information. Tip five. Wait, or is it, is it four? Tip four. Textbooks. How to properly read a textbook. Before I tell you to actually read your textbook, I'm gonna tell you how to properly read it because you probably didn't learn how to do it correctly. Start at the end of the chapter. Read the summary, read the problems so that you know what to look for. Go back to the beginning, only read the heading. Go back to the beginning again. Read the first and last sentence of each paragraph because that usually summarizes everything you need to know. There you go, you just read a textbook five times faster. Not only did you just read the textbook five times faster, but now you will retain things so much more. Tip five. Read your textbook before going to class. Easy to say this, much harder to actually do it. Using the method I taught you, it should be a breeze to read through at least one chapter and take some very quick notes on the most important things. If your teacher puts up the lecture slides before the class, you can get the right idea of whether or not you're reading the right things. Also, any time that you're provided with the lecture slides before class, give yourself minimum 10 minutes to skim through the slides so you know exactly what your teacher is going to talk about next and it will give your subconscious time to think of questions. Tip six. After each lecture, make sure that you summarize it in three sentences, write down any questions that you have, and then go ask your professor after class or at their office hours. And speaking of office hours, tip seven. Not gonna lie, at this point, I thought I only had three tips, but the more the merrier. Use your professors and your TAs. When you're studying and you find that there's a problem you just can't do, don't waste your time on it. What I like to do is send an email right away to my TA asking for guidance. And yes, I've probably annoyed all of my TAs at this point, but that's what they're there for. Ask for help because nobody is gonna go out of their way to help you. If you had a particularly hard study session with a lot of questions, I would recommend going to office hours because nobody wants to answer six math questions over email. Tip eight, practice, practice, practice. This goes especially for courses like math, physics, engineering, accounting, finance, or anything similar. You have to spend time practicing and doing practice problems, otherwise you will fail your midterms. 
Watching the professor write down a problem does not help you figure out how to solve that problem. So make sure that a lot of your study time outside of class is allocated specifically to doing problems. I think a good rule of thumb is you should be doing minimum three hours per week of good half hour block study time per class if you wanna get that 4.0 GPA. Tip nine. Get rid of your distractions, or at least postpone them. Having those five minute breaks between studying gives you time to feed that social media addiction. But if you choose to, you can only feed it for those five minutes. Get right back to studying. If you think this won't work for you and you'll get distracted anyway, you can be super extra like me and delete all of your social media accounts. I know some people who also restrict their phone time to certain apps, which will help a lot. And finally, tip 10. Exercise. Make sure that you're getting enough exercise and enough sleep. Exercise has been proven to increase your mood and increase your th clarity of thinking. Walking is a great start, but I want you to make sure you're doing something that will really get your heart pumping to increase the amount of blood flowing through your body and get rid of all that dirty used up blood. I know that's not how biology works, but I'm not a biologist. Another reason for those five minute breaks, get up and walk around. Now, the final takeaways. Here are the most important things that you should remember. You have to care about your own success to succeed. Nobody out there is going to succeed for you. If you don't care, it's not your professor's job to go out of their way and figure out how you're doing. You have to be in command and realize that it's not the professor's job to teach you, it's your job to learn from them. And if that means you have to go to them every single week with a new series of questions, that's amazing. That means that you're actually trying to learn something. And most importantly, don't get hung up on things that you don't understand. I wasted so much time on problems that I didn't even have the knowledge to solve at that point. So make sure that when this happens, you ask for help or you study a bit more and then try again. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Hopefully you found some of these tips useful. If you did, please share it and make sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment on the video letting me know what you thought. See you next time.